Hello everyone, it's great to see you all here today. And during our math time today, we're going to be uh, dealing with fractions in a few different ways. We're going to be making fractions with patterning blocks, we're going to be writing fractions, and we're also going to be drawing fractions on paper. Uh, but before we do that, I would like to review what we did last class, just to make sure everyone remembers what we were working with. Now, we talked about writing fractions. And when you write fractions, the denominator goes on the bottom. And the way we remember the denominator, that is the whole. And then on the top, we have the numerator. The numerator is part. So we have the part and the whole. The numerator and the denominator. And that's how we write fractions. So I want to see if everybody can remember how we say these fractions. We went over last class how we would say fractions when, when we, we see them. So this fraction here, if we have a 1 on top and a 3 on bottom, this is our part, this is our whole. This is our numerator, this is our denominator. Does anyone know how we might say this fraction here? Yes? Exactly, this is 1 third. Now this fraction here with the 3 as the numerator and the 4 as the denominator, we would call this 3 fourths. But there's also another way when we see a 4 on the bottom, there's another way that we could say that fraction. Does anybody remember that? Yes? Yes, 3 quarters, exactly. I'm so glad you guys remember what we were talking about yesterday. This is going to be very helpful for what we're doing today. All right. And if we have a 2 as our numerator on top, this is our part. The 5 is our denominator, our whole. This would be 2 fifths. Now this next one is a little bit more tricky. There was a special way that we say the fraction when we have a 2 on the bottom. Does anybody remember that? Yes? Exactly. 1 half. If we see a 2 on the bottom, that's a half. So here we have one half. And the last one, this would be five eighths. I'm really happy to see that you guys remember how we said fractions and remember how we wrote fractions. So now we're going to be able to move on to the next part of the lesson. But I also want to refresh our memories why fractions are so important. Because they're useful when we want to talk about part of something. We're not always going to have a whole. So if we want to talk about part of something, we need to use fractions. And there's lots of times in school where we're going to need to use fractions to talk about parts of wholes. And also when you're at home, you can use fractions. For example, you might say to your mother, we have half a box of cereal left, so we might need to buy more cereal next time we go grocery shopping. If you're in the car and you notice that there's only an eighth of a tank of gas left, you might say to your parents, we should get gas soon so we don't run out because we only have an eighth of a tank. All right, if this yellow hexagon is our hole and I want to figure out what the red trapezoid is, first I would have to figure out how many trapezoids does it take to make up our hexagon hole. So I would do this. And this. And it looks like it takes two trapezoids to make up our whole hexagon. So, I would write this as it takes two to make up our whole, the denominator. So two goes on the bottom. And then we're talking about two hexagons. So those are our parts. We have two of them. But two out of two... Two halves is the same as one whole, so we could just write one. Now, if we were talking about one of these trapezoids, then we would have one half. But what if I wanted to figure out what the blue rhombus is? First of all, I would have to see how many blue rhombuses it takes up to make up my whole hexagon. So I would do this. And the next one. 
And it looks like one more, if we can get them on there, right? So it looks like it takes three blue rhombuses to make up one whole hexagon. Three would be my numerator, because we're talking about three of them. And it takes up three to make the whole, the denominator. Now, three thirds is equal to one whole, right? So we could just write one. But what if we were just talking about two blue rhombuses? It takes three to make up our whole. So three is the denominator. It goes on the bottom. And we have two blue rhombuses. So two is our numerator. And we would say this as two thirds. But what if we just were talking about one blue rhombus? Three is still our denominator because it takes three of them to make up a whole hexagon. And we're talking about one of them, so one goes on the top. And we have one third. A blue rhombus is one third of our yellow hexagon. Now things might get a little bit tricky because I want to know what the green triangle is. So what would I need to do first? That's right, I need to figure out how many green triangles it takes to make up the yellow hexagon. So, we'll put one, two, three, four, five, and six. It took six green triangles to make up one whole yellow hexagon. So we have six of them. Six is our numerator. There's six parts. And it takes six of them to make up our whole. So six is also the denominator. And we know that if these two numbers are the same, it's going to be one whole. So we can just write one. But what if we were talking about just five of the green triangles? Five is our numerator because we have five parts. And six is still our denominator because it takes six to make up the whole. This would be five sixths. But what if we had four parts? four triangles. Four would be our numerator, and six is still our denominator. This is four sixths. And if we were talking about just three of them, we would have three as our numerator, six is still our denominator, three sixths. All right, and if we had just two green triangles, this would be two sixths. And one green triangle, one is our part, we just have one part, and it takes six of them to make up the whole, so six is our denominator. Numerator, denominator, this is one-sixth. The triangle is one-sixth of our yellow hexagon. Okay, now you've all been broken into pairs, you all have patterning blocks at your table, and you all have these cards with questions on them. Now I'm going to model for you how you can go about answering these questions. My card asks, if two hexagons are the whole, then what is one trapezoid? Okay, so the first thing I would need to do is get my whole. And it says that the whole is two hexagons. So I'm going to trace two hexagons. Here's our first hexagon, and our second hexagon. Now the next step would be to figure out how many trapezoids it takes to, to fill our hole, to make one hole. So I'm going to go ahead and trace the trapezoid now. We have one trapezoid, and then there's another trapezoid, and over here we have 
one trapezoid and another trapezoid. So it looks like four trapezoids in total make up our whole. So four is going to be our denominator, our whole. It'll go on the bottom. And we're talking about one trapezoid. The question asks, what is one trapezoid? One goes on top, it's our numerator. A trapezoid is one-fourth of our whole. All right, you all did an excellent job answering those questions, and I'm really happy about all the material we covered today. We did some great stuff. We drew fractions on paper. We made fractions using the patterning blocks. We wrote fractions and named them. It's all really good stuff. And you remember why fractions are so important, because we use them to talk about parts of things. And we're going to be using them a lot in school, especially as you move to the older grades. You're going to be using fractions more and more, and you can really use them anywhere. Say if you wanted to talk about your piggy bank, and it's getting close to being full, you can say, my piggy bank is five-eighths full. Now next class, we're going to be comparing fractions. We're going to be saying that fractions are equal to each other, or one fraction is greater than or less than another fraction. And I know you guys are going to do great with that, because you've been doing great with all this stuff we've been learning. You're, you're building a great base of knowledge on fractions, and I'm really happy about the way things are going. So excellent job today. I know we're going to really learn how to compare fractions next class, and we're ready to move on to the next subject.